Hey everybody, the Reeswirl here, and welcome back to more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Alright, September 7th, 10am, District Court number... Uh, court... Courtroom... Number 1. Oh! <gasps> Whoa! Oh yes. Oh, I love this music so much. It's so good! Alright, so the court is now in... Session for the trial of Miss Maya Fay. It's Edgeworth. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I better not show any signs of weakness today or he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder. We have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin then. You may call your first witness. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Ah, there he is. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir. My name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. Ooh. The body was found by this window here. The cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the Thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hands, sir. The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue. Floor plans added to the court record. Holy balls is a lot of stuff. I'd forgotten how much shit I'd found. The glass, the phone, the thinker, the wiretap, the note. Now, detective. Y yes, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard, hard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe, please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Witness testimony, my FA's arrest. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. Hmm. The very moment, you say? Very well, Mr. Wright. Not very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? Testimony! I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh. What the hell's this? Oh, Maya just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness's testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It worked a l it worked a lots of times. Huh. Should have expected Maya sh would know some of her sister's tricks. Alright, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. So essentially, press him on every detail. Alright. That I can do. Maya Faye's arrest. As soon as the phone phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. Why does it say why? What happens if I press Y? Does that press? Or is that going to activate somewhere else? Oh right, it's so you can say it. You could just say, hold it! No thanks. Who did you say you got a call from? Hey pal, don't play dumb. You know who. The call was from a customer at the Gatewater Hotel, right across from the crime scene. Hmm, okay. I pressed. Not sure it did much, though. Right, please continue. There were two people there already. 
<laughs> yeah, just press on everything. Detective Gumshoe, how long would you say it took? Between you receiving the call and your arrival at the scene of the crime. Hmm, right. I'd say it was about three minutes. That's pretty fast. Our motto this month is quick response. That's how I got there before the killer got away. Indeed. So, tell us who the two people you found on the scene were. Yes, sir. The defendant, Miss Maya Faye, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Pressing on this seems like it would be retarded, but I'll do it. <laughs> Are you absolutely sure it was us? Listen, pal, your dumb act will only get you so far. With her f funky hippie clothes and your spiky hair, you two stand out like, like suspicious people at a crime scene. Well, he does have a point about her. She is pretty unmistakable. I should pick my points to press with a little more care. I don't need to. You can press on every detail, and it's no consequence. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Faye. Why is that? What's your reason? Why? We had a, ri a witness account describing her. Oh, the music stopped. Okay. Hold on just one second. Y yeah? If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? Did... did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. <laughs> exactly what about this suspicious woman in Pink's claim was hard evidence? But what? Miss May isn't suspicious, and she sure isn't Pink, pal. Well, I guess she is pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Uh... Hmm. I guess pressing can have its advantages. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony. Your Honor, sir. There was something I should have told you f about first, Your Honor. Of course. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. Bam, 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 bam. Great, hard evidence this time. Fantastic. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. And this is very own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. This game flashes a shit ton. Order in the court! How are you like that? That's my hard evidence. <laughs> hmm. Before we begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Your Honor? Why didn't you testify about this vital piece of evidence the first time? <laughs> I know. I'm real embarrassed I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well, the defense may begin its cross-examination. Hard evidence. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I might as well, I might as well press. It gets more dialogue out. Did you find any evidence? No, no. Don't jump the gun on me, pal. Just listen, I'm getting to the good part. I got a bad feeling about this. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. Right. Just because you found it next to the body doesn't mean the victim wrote it. Oh ho, then who did write it, Mr. Smite? <laughs> Not Mr. Smite Vance, Smite Vance. Who? Uh. Miss May, I did. No. The killer. The, the killer? Anyone can see that. Oh. You're saying the killer wrote her own name. Buddy, please. No. They did it to frame her, you idiot. Yeah, she was framed. Hold on. Don't waggle that finger at me. If that's the case, where's your evidence? Uh, <laughs> I guess it was a bit of a tall order for you. 
Those without evidence shouldn't open their mouths, Mr. Wright. Yeah, pal. Well, Detective, tell, what, tell us what was written on that memo you found. One of the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Okay. Boom. Do you have proof it was Mia that wrote that? Or who wrote that? Of course I do, pal. Uh-oh. He sounded pretty confident. This might not be good. Yeah, last test results showed that the blood was the victim's. What kind of tests were these again? Huh? What kind? Uh, well... I hear they take the uh, little bits in the blood, the uh, hem... hem... Hermogoblins. <laughs> Hopgob, Hermogoblin, Bobbin. I refuse to testify on this matter, sir. I'm no expert on blood tests. Yes, that was quite clear. You may continue with your testimony. Thanks, pal. I mean, your honor, sir. Detective Gumshoe. Y yeah? I think you can expect a pleasant bonus in your next paycheck. Paycheck. Oh. Haha, <laughs> that was a mess. Right, where was I? There was blood found on the victim's finger. Okay. On which hand was the bloody finger, detective? The right hand. Hmm, she was right-handed. <laughs> nice try. Uh-oh. I guess it wasn't too hard to see what I was getting at there. True. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. Okay. What about the autopsy? Oh, she couldn't. If the death was instantaneous. Hmm. So, I now know that if I help hold Y, that's when you could just yell it yourself. Though I know how crappy the mic on the DS was, you'd probably have to shout objection like ten times for it to actually register. Hey, I've just realised something. I don't know if this is actually intentional, but when you actually present something correctly, the, the music cuts out and it goes completely silent. Detective Gumshoe, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That, was, that she was accusing the defendant, Mia Fey. That's really what you're saying? What, what? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it, who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. B backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But... No but in your way out of this one, detective. Oh! Order, order. The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have the time to write anything down. Mr. Wright. I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? When? Day of the murder, day after the murder, I forget. I don't know. After the murder. Probably. Wait, it probably said on it, but I don't know. Day of. I'm pretty sure it was the day of the murder. You're wrong there, pal. We didn't write an autopsy report till the day after. Well, there we go. Oh, right. <laughs> The prosecution's point being? Oh god, look at him, he looks so evil! That autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. What? The second autopsy was performed yesterday, at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No way! Your Honor. It's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. That is all. What a dick. I see. Damn you, Edgeworth. I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? You a sham? I'm a sham. <laughs> oh my god. 
you're a shame. Mr. Edgeworth, I've heard there's nothing you won't do to get your verdict. What reason could you possibly have have had to request a second autopsy report? Mr. Wright, the defense will refrain from personal attacks on the prosecution. No matter, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, say what you will, the evidence in this report is undeniable. Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Understood. The court accepts the evidence. A new autopsy report. Updated in the court record. Well, Your Honor. The evidence strongly suggests the victim was intending... Uh, identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. Bloody bow he does every time. Darn, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Oh great, it's April. Is it April? Is that her name? I can't remember her name. Miss May. Oh, it is May. April. Let the witness Miss April May take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? Oh my. Witness, your name please. April May. <laughs> what the hell? The boobs jiggle. That's really weird. At your service. Order, an introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. Oh yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this cart. Tell us, where were you on the night of, se of September 5th, when the murder occurred? Gee, I was, like, in my hotel room? I checked in right after lunch. This hotel is directly across from the Fay & Co. law offices. Mmm, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the cart about what you saw. Oh my god. Oh, her testimony. Okay. It was like 9pm at night. I don't need to say 9pm at night. It was like 9 at night. I looked out the window, you know? And then... Oh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. Well, that girl, she caught up to her and... And she hit her. Then the woman with the long hair... She kinda slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy. God. Hmm. Well, Your Honor. We see. It is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any. Wait, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. What about my cross examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss Meyer Fay's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. But hey, how dare you? Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Yeah. What the heck? I have to cross-examine every single witness. It is the law. Why the hell would you say no? Yes, I'm doing it. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. Ding ding! The witness's account. It was like, nine at night, I looked out the window, you know? Press on fucking everything, who cares? <laughs> why did you do that? Huh? Why? Like, why what? Why did you look out of the window? Were you expecting to see something? Oh, well, um, gee. What, that's it? She can't get out of this question that easily. I sort of, you know... Had a feeling. Well, I have a feeling she's trying to avoid the question. Maybe I should press a little harder on this one. Uh, Go for it or back down. Nah. If I go too deep, I might not come back out alive. I'll back off for now. You looked out the window, what did you see next? I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. Hold it! Are you sure? The woman with long hair. That was Maya Faye? Uh, Mia? Faye? Fuck me. Slender, sort of, well, has... Well, some people might say pretty if that's your thing. Your thing? 
and the person attacking her... The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Wait, could you actually go back to a previous statement and press again? Oh wow, you actually could. That's weird. I thought they wouldn't let you press multiple times. Yeah. One attacking her was a mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. How do you know she was the defendant? Huh? Well, you know. Sh she had a girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I, I, I just know, okay? There's only one person at the scene of the crime with a short girlish figure. The, the testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. He's right. I question the testimony. Aha! The music cut out. I was right. Hold on a minute. That testimony stinks. What? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that... You're lying. You saw nothing. Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? Uh... Oh, her... Her facade is slipping. Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes, what is the meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless. About this, I mean. Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, Maya Faye, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. Oh, yeah! Ah. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis, except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, but, still, we do know if she was dressed that way. We don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. Mmm. What do you say to that, Miss May? What are you trying to say? You mean lawyer? <laughs> I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. Oh my god. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. So now we're going through her testimony again. Alright. I did see everything. I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I saw it. I did. That... that clock. That... the kind of statue clock. The thinker, I think. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? God. Hmm. I see. Hang on a minute, how would she know the statue was a clock? Okay, whatever. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. Yeah, how would she have known it was a clock? It's the same... the same deal with the first case. Where the witness said it was a clock, when you wouldn't... you couldn't know that unless, you know... I would say unless you were using it, but... We know it wasn't her that killed. I did see everything I did. I mean, that's a very vague thing to say, but whatever. The victim, the woman dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Girl in the hippie clothes. It's the one where she says about the... The clock. Here we go. That clock. The statuary clock. The thinker. Present. Yeah, the murder weapon looks like a, a statue, but it's actually a clock. Miss May, what you said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Naughty Mr. Lawyer. You just said that this statue of the Thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Uh, another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock too. And he was found guilty of murder. Yeah, but she isn't guilty. That is something I object. Order, order. Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Ooh, uh... The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. 
You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. God, I'm objecting on my own now. Phoenix is becoming sentient. What questions are all I have, Your Honor? Then as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Whew, that was close. If he stopped me there, the trial would be over. What? So, what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? Th that's... Because I heard it? Yes, I heard it. It said... It said I heard it say the time. God. So, you've been to the law offices of Fay and Co? N no Hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard from my hotel room. The law offices of Fay and Co, where the murder took place, are very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, Your Honor. It couldn't have rung. No, it actually couldn't. She took out the electronics and stuffed them with paper instead. Evidence. It couldn't have rung. Burr, 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 burr. Your Honor, members of the court. It is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. Not the batteries are dead, it's empty. That clock is missing its clockwork. Doof, doof, doof. How could you possibly... Just have a look, as soon as you can. Oh! See anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. This game flashes so bloody much, is what I'm noticing. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar. F fat? <laughs> That's all she took away from it. Well, Miss May? Ah, oh, great. Edgeworth has something up his sleeve. Tisk tisk. Hmm? Great. What's he got now? Quite sure you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty? Somehow he knew? I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Hmm. That's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? I can, actually. I have a phone call. Ho ho! Impossible, of course. I have proof. What? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork w was removed is... The phone call! A conversation between the Chief and Maya. Touch the check button to listen. Alright, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what is it say? What is it this time? The thinker. Oh, the clock isn't talking right now. Let's take the clock work out. Cool. Right, present. Take a look at this! Hmm, that's a very cute cell phone. You have a girly phone. Wait, wait. This isn't my phone. Listen. This is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order, order. Oh my god, look at his face. The defendant's cell phone? This wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. The good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. My heart goes out to you, Edgeworth. Not. Let's hear the conversation. So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you, then? If you could. I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry. September 5th, 9 uh, 9.27 a.m. 
and a big old beep. Your Honor, I think this recording makes it clear that the clockwork was already gone. And this was recorded in the morning before the witness even arrived at her hotel. Well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that that weapon was a clock? Well... Well, isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Uh, what store was that again? I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. So the witness had seen it before, that would make sense. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? Of course I do. They aren't in stores. Larry made them. He made two. The witness claimed she had seen it before. But this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the witness had not seen the clock before. Right, okay. Just present the thinker. It says, made by Larry Butts. It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. 